Let's get right to it. What are some interview questions I've seen or I've asked in technical interviews for machine learning roles? Let's start off with an easy one. What is classification in machine learning? What are the core types of classification used in machine learning? Classification is separating objects into separate groups. That's all it is. Binary classification is separating objects into two groups. It's called binary classification because there are only two groups. If I'm building a model and I'm trying to classify an object as a cat or dog, that's a binary classification model. The output for the model is a one for dog or a zero for cat. A multi-class classification model is when we have more than one object being grouped. If we add birds to our earlier example, then we have a multi-class classification problem. We now have multiple classes to predict. Don't complicate interview questions. Do the opposite, simplify them. If you know what you're talking about, you should be able to deconstruct any topic and explain it to a fifth grader. If you can't do that, you don't know it well enough. All right, let's move on. What is dimensionality reduction? Now, I'll put a link to a video I authored on how I answered this question on a whiteboard for a FANG interview. But for now, let's provide an Occam's Razor answer right now. The number of input variables or features for your data set is referred to its dimensionality. Dimensionality reduction refers to the techniques that reduce the number of input variables for a data set. More input features often make predictive modeling tasks more challenging to model. This is more generally referred to as the curse of dimensionality. All right, last interview question. Why is more data better? I've seen this answered by a lot of different people, and I've seen some really bad answers from some top people in the space. More data is always better because of the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers is a theorem from probability and statistics that suggests that the average result from repeating an experiment multiple times will better approximate the true or expected underlying result. Here's an example. If I flip a coin five times, is the average of those flips representative of the probability of flipping a coin? No, not likely. What if I flip that same coin five million times? Is the average of flips for those representative of the probability of flipping a coin? Certainly, it's a lot closer than five flips. The more data you have, the better chance that we have at arriving at the true answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, have a great day. We'll see you soon.